Continuing in our coverage of the Corinthian problem, after having Paul's beseeching that there be no divisions among you, in verse 10 we look further. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanas, besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 11 to 17 Let's break this down. Paul's likely reason for the writing of the 1 Corinthian epistle was having obtained insight into the state of this fellowship. Namely, there are contentions among you, meaning a strife or struggle of words in debate or quarrel. And with the prior inference of divisions among them, the student of the word will ask why? Why was there such a condition in the fellowship among these believers? Was it over an important doctrinal point, or was it some petty item so typical of humans when acting from the flesh? Well, you do not have to wait long for an answer, for in what is verses 12 to 16 we learn that the issue was water baptism. In fact, the main issue seems to have been that many within the Corinthian fellowship were apparently boasting regarding the individual who had administered the water baptism to them, example, the person who dunked them in water, Added to this source of contention were preacher preferences. This sounds familiar, as some apparently preferred certain preachers and messages, and were contentious with others in this regard. Let's pause and note that, under the Old Covenant as well as the perceived New Covenant offering, there are numerous baptisms and numerous baptism methodologies, not all of which involved water. We can note that John the Baptist was sent to perform water baptism per John 1 verse 31, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. Similarly, Peter and the other disciples were sent to water baptize, as we learn from Jesus speaking to his eleven remaining disciples, saying, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Water baptism was part of both the ministry of John the Baptist and the eleven subsequently twelve with Matthias in their ministry to Israel. In fact, on the day of Pentecost when, being confronted by Peter for their crucifixion of their Messiah, the large number of Jews gathered asked, What shall we do? To this, Peter replied, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But Paul, in confronting the division and contentions within the Corinthian fellowship, reminded them of the new information he had received from the glorified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, saying, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Effectively, Paul says here that his commissioning was not about water baptism, rather the preaching of the gospel of the death, burial and resurrection of Christ, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. With water baptism addressed, Paul further says that his preaching of the gospel of grace was not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. This effectively dealt with preacher preferences, clearly indicating that it was not the manner wisdom of words that was important, lest Christ's cross was losing its centrality to the message of the gospel and the doctrine thereof. Sadly, such contention and division still exist in the body of Christ today. Many argue about the method, manner, and even the denominational uniqueness of their water baptism over others. And many other individuals or entire local bodies of believers are loyal to a particular preacher and will have great contention, should that one leave a fellowship. And we learn today that all such contention and division can lead to lessening the importance of the core gospel message of the cross of Christ. Believer, be sound in the things that are core to the preaching of the gospel and rightly divided doctrine, and don't be distracted by those things which are not.